1963, aged 16, I was obliged to leave the posh Cambridge school I had attended since I was seven. Two years at the CCAT or Technical College followed until I dropped out finally and irrevocably in 1965. In 1967, after stays in Oxford, Weymouth and Bournemouth, I ended up in London. By the time I returned to Cambridge in 1971, the 60s atmosphere was over, with the old centre being demolished and the hard drug culture spreading over the city. According to the national media, the only popular culture to originate in Cambridge was the middle-class pop band Pink Floyd. Alongside this, a small exclusive group of former students and public school boys claim even now to have been the sole innovators of alternative culture in the city since the early 1960s. The output of the town rather than gown was dismissed as one or two teddy boy rock bands. I believe that these views were through the jaded eyes of the university which began to lose its cultural dominance at the turn of the decade. On bass guitar, from the Prime Movers and Why Sad and many other bands, my good friend George Pollack, ladies and gentlemen. On drums, ladies and gentlemen, from the Quadrant, Picture Book, and many, many, many other bands in the 60s, and from Why Sad. A man who's become a legend in his own lifetime. I'm proud to say I spent 20 years on stage with a guy. I'm still a saxophone, ladies and gentlemen, from the original Soul Committee. Three bands, there I say. Holly Five! Ladies and gentlemen, on lead guitar, a man I started all this off with way, way back in 1960 in the Vikings, the Sundowners and if you speak to the man afterwards he played with every bloody band in Cambridge that was around at the time Ivan Carly, my friend, ladies and gentlemen Ivan Carly! In September 2008, Cambridge friends from the 1960s called into the Six Bells pub to share their memories. A charity called City Wakes was holding events to celebrate the life of Sid Barrett, who had died two years previously. Using these memories, including photos and scrapbooks, City Wakes claimed they would be publishing a coffee table book about 1960s Cambridge by Christmas of that year. As expected, the book never appeared, but there was a concert and art exhibition, along with a so-called happening involving various former Cambridge residents. They claimed to have been good friends of Sid Barrett, although they had not seen him for 40 years. One event that did truly attract local people was Warren Assange's Roots of Cambridge Rock. This, and a walking tour of Cambridge City Centre, was to lead to other events and publications over the next five years involving many people who had been active in the 1960s music and social scene.
I made no contribution to the Phantom book, but did help Stephen Pyle with scanning and printing for his collage of 1960s images. Displayed at events during and after 2008, the collage found a home in the Geldart pub in Ainsworth Street. In early 2009, Warren decided to continue organising walking tours of the city centre. I offered to edit and lay out a booklet about local venues and meeting places. Also taking part as guides were Stephen Pyle and Charlie Weedham, former roadie for T-Rex, The Pretty Things and other bands. Former Cambridge band members Dave Parker and Tony Middleton soon joined with their stories and banter. The tours were an education to me though. Having often been in the Still and Sugarloaf bar under the Victoria Cinema, I never visited the Victoria Ballroom upstairs. That was a venue for pop bands like Jokers Wild and Foreign Students more than the rough R&B of those without and other blues bands in the town. Thank you very much. Thank you.